Water fasting has really taken the health community by storm. People are often asking me if I can cover more on fasting. Well, message heard, loud and clear. In this video, the first of a series of videos discussing the health science of water fasting, we'll start out by taking a look at a study aiming to define the effect five days of water fasting has on blood pressure, insulin resistance, cholesterol, and more. As fair warning, the cholesterol results are, well, surprising. But in the next video of the series, we'll look at another study that extends the water fast even longer, and we'll be able to see if a longer water fast creates even stronger health effects. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start with five days. This initial study recruited 41 normal weight men and women and had them stay at a laboratory facility for eight days. The first five days were water fasting days where they were only permitted to consume mineral water. Then they underwent a refeed where they were allowed to eat a controlled portion of food over three days. And then the researchers took measures at the baseline, so before the water fasting period, then at the end of the fasting period, so five days, at the end of the refeed, the eight-day mark, and then conveniently looked at one month back to their usual nutrition and again at the three-month mark. I like the study design here because it gives us clear data across multiple areas of time, but I digress. Let's look at the results. First up, weight. I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to imagine that if people don't consume any food or any calories as a whole, that they will lose weight. Obviously, they lost weight. But what's interesting is that these people that aren't particularly overweight, and yet they still lost significant weight. So how much? Almost 7% of their body weight, or in absolute terms, almost 4.6 kilograms. But I would focus on the percentage. Normally, I'd be able to back calculate and find out the fat loss by subtracting the water weight regain from the three days of refeeding, but the researchers failed to add numbers except for the comparison of the baseline versus five days fasting. Bummer and an annoying oversight by the researchers, but I can confidently say that these individuals lost substantial body fat. The weight loss was also still somewhat reduced after one month, but crept back up to pre-fasting levels after three months. All right, what about a more complicated area, the cardiovascular system? In terms of blood pressure, there's a systolic number, which is the highest pressure applied to the heart as it's pumping, and the diastolic number, which is the lowest pressure applied to the heart after finishing pumping, all part of one heartbeat. The results showed a significant decrease in both, with the systolic blood pressure dropping four points over the five days fasting, which is about a 3.5% reduction. Not massive, but healthy. You might notice that the systolic pressure dropped more in the initial three days of the fast, then jumped up to the four point drop that we've just discussed, but then it reduced again after the refeed and remains lower than before the fast for at least one month before stabilizing to pre-fast after three months. There were more significant drops in diastolic blood pressure, but they normalized much sooner at the end of the one month period. So let's discuss insulin resistance, a hallmark of diabetes. Do these individuals experience changes related to their diabetes risk? Yes significant ones. While we don't have measures of HOMA IR or some other comparable tests, we have other data that strongly indicates a change in insulin resistance. One of those markers is blood sugar. Blood sugar was significantly reduced even three days into the fast and remained reduced for the five days. Now it bounced back up to pre-fasting levels immediately upon food consumption. But how about the second marker, insulin, however? Well, insulin was absolutely crushed by water fasting, dropping by over 60%. Yet again, it rebounds to pre-fasting levels immediately after consuming food. So the data would imply that water fasting likely improves insulin sensitivity, reducing insulin resistance during the fasting period, but has little long-term effects. 
But keep in mind that these individuals weren't overly unhealthy or suffering from insulin resistance issues. So they may not experience a benefit because they do not have room for significant improvement. Finally, shifting our focus to cholesterol, there were some really interesting results that might catch most people off guard. Across the board, there was a significant increase in all cholesterol measures. If that's measured by total cholesterol, low density lipoprotein particle cholesterol, or although it isn't cholesterol, triglycerides or blood fats also increased. Meanwhile, the HDL or high density cholesterol declined. So why might that be? Well, if you look at the starting point of these people, take, for example, their total cholesterol, they were already borderline high in cholesterol. And then water fasting supercharged their cholesterol by increasing it by a whopping 25%, sending them securely in the high cholesterol category. Now, here are two possible explanations. One, cholesterol particles are used to transport fat-related molecules across the body. And as the body switches to relying on fat for energy, it could increase its cholesterol production to generate enough transport vessels for a variety of functions. So, a physiological reason. Second, these people already had pretty high cholesterol to start. So, it's possible that they were dyslipidemic, meaning they have an abnormal production and or removal of fats or cholesterol, and the water fasting simply supercharged the condition. Actually, I'd speculate that there might be a third reason, but I'll leave that for a future video in the series because I need data from the next study to make my point. Either way, the results normalize within 30 days, so it isn't a long-standing effect, except it is for triglycerides. This is an odd one because the triglyceride levels, which are blood fats, don't return to pre-fasting levels. They actually get higher after the fast, and the effect is long-standing, meaning, as you can see, there's even higher triglycerides after three months than when these individuals started fasting. So this could be another symptom of dyslipidemia that I mentioned earlier, or something else is going on. If you have potential explanations, please post them and I will add them to the notes of this video. This data leads to some clearly positive feedback on water fasting for five days time, with some notable head scratchers. But what happens when you extend your water fast for two weeks? Do we see more dramatic effects? Well, let's find out. Let's move on to our next study and video in our series.